Hello everyone, it's Scott and welcome back to another episode of Sky Factory 2. So in this episode I realized that I have a little bit of cleaning up to do. So I put the auto spawner in a terrible location because the auto spawner needs essence to run and essence can only be produced by a grinder but a grinder has to grind mobs and there's no feedback loop here so the the mobs that are produced by the auto spawner when consumed do not power enough essence in the grinder to make more mobs so to me the solution is why don't we just move all of the grinding material over to the mob spawner and then I can have a renewable resource of mob essence which then can power the cow spawner and voila I'll have infinite cows but before I did that I, I realized I needed to start cleaning up this mess so I have a couple uh, chests here that are uh, basically gathering <laughs> uh, loot bags I have too many loot bags here so over here is where I think I'm gonna put the uh, the new mob grinder and mob spawner but before I do that I had a idea that I could basically work on the next step of my achievement wall so if we revisit over here we finished the planter and I'm not gonna work on crops right now but what I want to do is basically prep myself for jetpacks and before I do that I need to have a special kind of block downstairs in my factory that's going to be able to charge things and that's where I get the energetic infuser so the infuser is a uh, pretty easy to make it's uh, one of the thermal expansions so it's one of these that needs a machine frame which we've seen how to make uh, it's just basically mixing uh, uh, iron and tin and with a whole bunch of thermal coils that are just uh, silver and redstone and you know, a little, a little copper, which all of which I have plenty of material, and leadstone, which is this lead surrounding a block of redstone. And so it produces this energetic infuser. So the infuser absorbs RF and inputs it into any item that I place here in the blue box. And after charging, it will produce items that are fully charged here in the orange box. So before I did that, I figured, hey, why don't I create a demo item? So I got a couple of pieces of material together here that help me to make a magnet. So the electromagnet uses conductive iron, electrical steer, and a vibrant crystal, which is this emerald surrounded by a vibrant alloy. And I'm getting vibrant alloy from the loop bags, uh, even though I think that we could be grinding down uh, pearls and energetic uh, alloy which is a whole bunch of redstone and gold and such and, and it's better just use the loot bags here um, because that that just gets me the items uh, the uh, vibrant uh, ingots right away so let's move over to our crafting station and one electromagnetic, electromagnet, please. And let's head down to the infuser just to demo what happens here. So, infuser goes in the left, and we see that it's sucked up into the charging area, where hey, it charged pretty fast. Now I have a completely charged electromagnet. So, how does this work? Well, the electromagnet if we shift right click while it is in our inventory you can see it's now glowing and any block that's broken from a much larger radius will now fly into my inventory and this is the uh, what I believe is the legit way to use magnet power because I worked for it so what I want to do next is gather up all of this dirt and I'll do so by essentially vein minering it 
and allowing the magnet to suck it all up here and now I've I've recovered all of my dirt so with that let's head back to our collection chest and we should have a couple more grass seeds so let's do the prep work and place the items down here whoops that was kinda weird alright so uh, the dirt can go back down and as we saw before with the mob spawner uh, the spawner needs a 7x7 seven seven area uh, for it to spawn in. Let's place down some seeds and the rest of the dirt. I don't even know if this is required, but I know that cows uh, love to spawn on dirt normally. Um, so just for a visual effect. Ah, which reminds me. So while that is running, let's grab some food so I can continue sprinting. Uh, over here, I started the first prep work for the uh, Botania uh, planting area by making a watering can. So the watering can is a pretty easy recipe now that if I can find one it's just iron bone meal on a bowl and you know tapping on water then basically charges the watering can and the watering can is basically like a bone meal uh, dropper and if you see here I can just right click water the ground and it's immediately spreading my grass and basically not depleting my water at all. All I have to do is stand here and right click and that was kind of weird. So I've got mo I got some I've got some mobs who are falling through the edges here of my <laughs> of my uh mob spawner. I think it's just a visual glitch. Um and there's the last grass seed. So now I have a 7x7 seven seven area and one buggy uh, so let's take the auto spawner um, let's create a placeholder block here auto spawner will go on top the grinder we will place over well I think I'm gonna need two grinders now one that will face inward and one that will face outward. And so the as we saw before, the grinder has a 5x5 five five radius, which if I remove the spikes will totally encompass the bottom of the of the mob spawner. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna then have to move all Oh dear, what's what's going on here? The mob spawner apparently is ah had some stored energy. So it's already starting to grab things that didn't quite die as they fell down onto the uh, onto the block. Well, that's interesting though, because I don't know if these actually have a higher drop ratio or not than just letting them die on a spike. Uh, what's in here? Some iron. All right. So let's just throw this back in one of these boxes, and oh, that's full. Cool. Okay, here we go, and. That way I can start to um, basically lay out oh, more stuff. Jeez. Okay, so uh, this is where we are going to place the conduit. And so let's head back over to where I've been storing all of our conduits. Um, Okay, transfer nodes, transfer pipes. Okay, eventually we're going to need to move the energy conduit network. Uh, where's my liquid conduits right here? Fluid conduits. Great. Um, 
Let's head back over. Thank you, Harvester, for cleaning up that mess. Alright, so back over here. So what I'd like to do, so if we see here, uh, we don't have any essence. Hmm, kind of interesting. So let's route this like so. Hmm. That's going to be an interesting uh, puzzle. Well, let's route it like this for now. And so this will extract essence from the side and always be active. And then that will then insert over here so that the next time that the spawner runs, let's place our cow inside and just wait and see what happens. So it's going to need some energy shortly. And in order to do that, Still no essence. Um, in order to do that, I'm going to need to run the energy conduit basically all the way across. Um, so, let's figure out the best way to do that. I have way too much junk in my inventory. In the interest of time, I'm going to make a quick cut, and I'll be right back when I've run the conduit over the void. And with that, yeah, it is working. So, what I needed to do was run my redstone conduit all the way underneath the base here to hook up underneath the grinder. The grinder then, every time it hits an idle tick, kills whatever mobs have dropped to the bottom of the uh, of the collection tower. I had to remove the spike because apparently it turns out that damaged mobs will not generate any essence. So the essence is then being captured by the fluid conduit and it's being fed, excuse me cow, it's being fed over here to the auto spawner at which point the auto spawner is spawning lots and lots and lots of cows. So, it doesn't appear to take a lot of essence, but enough that the uh, auto spawner is now, oh my gosh. Okay, so let's find uh, a way to contain this mess and, excuse me cow, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, let's go back over. I got cows in my field. All right, let's grab some. Oh my gosh, I got too much stuff. So let's grab some glass here, just for a, a visual effect. I think what I'll do is I'll make a nice little holding pen out of glass instead of fence for our cows. So I, I think I'm willing to call this a uh, success. So next thing I'm going to do is generate another grinder that will then be pointing in the direction of the cows. And that way it can suck the cows up and automatically harvest the meat and leather. And that will give me a pretty good source of leather for all sorts of other neat things. Excuse me, cow. Excuse me, excuse me. There we go. And... Great. So that should contain 
Wait a minute, no, it's not actually going to contain the cows. I need to, I think, top this off here just to prevent cows from being able to jump up on the conduit and then jump up onto the top of the glass. And I'll, I'll finish this off later. Uh, but I think this is a pretty good setup uh, for generating um, whatever auto spawner. Looks like more kyles are coming in. Whatever uh, auto spawned critter I uh, think I might need. So with that, I'm going to make a quick cut and set up for the next project. Okay, there's one thing I want to take care of uh, pretty quick, and that's expand the storage units here. So what's happening is I'm now at the upper limit of my better barrel at 128 stacks, and I have way too much sand and gravel. And so it's starting to overflow upstairs too. It's very disorganized. So I think it's time that we create the deep storage unit. So this is now that I have plastic, uh, this is a very easily attainable uh, block since I'm producing a lot of ender pearls upstairs uh, in my mob farm. So I'm going to grab a couple of plastic sheets from my raw plastic and I'm going to need to make, uh, let's say, about six eyes of ender and that will give me three deep storage units. So, I'd like to put one on the cobble, one on the sand, and one on the dust for now, since those seem to be the the units that are uh, filling up the fastest. So, all right, let's preposition here, make a little space in the inventory. and away you go. Bam. So deep storage unit will be placed here. And like that, we are going to start feeding it sand. Not bad. Not bad at all. So I'm going to clean up the rest of these, place the storage units down, and by then I think I should be ready to start magical crops. Alright, so we have an area prepared over by our food farm uh, that I've laid out ready to place some seeds for magical crops. So I've created a, a wall here because I remember a little bit of magical crops that this is going to be uh, a giant game of uh, little, little balls. Let's see, magical crops. So these infusion stones are used to convert... Um, basically upgrade the various Minikyo products up to higher level. So in the process of creating a infusion stone you get to keep the old infusion stone. So what I like to do is use this space on the wall as a trophy area per se which is why I needed to have so much leather I think this will help organize once we get the uh, infusion stones in the volume that I expect. So how do we begin with magical crops? Well, as I just showed, what we need to do is begin with Minikyo. Minichi. So Minikyo Essence is produced from our mob drops, but we can also grow special seeds to 
produce more Manikyo. But I think we have so much now in our storage area. We have at least three stacks, well, two and a half stacks of blocks of Manikyo, which are nine each. So with the emerald and the Manikyo essence, we can now produce our first infusion stone. So the infusion stone is used to produce higher level essence and in this case it looks like I can create a crucio infusion stone once I have a variety of essence. So let's work on a couple of seeds. So the first type of seeds let's say is our Manikyo seeds. So that's just normal Manikyo essence surrounding a normal seed. So we head over to our food farm where we have more than enough seeds. So let's just experiment here and make our first level of Manikyo seeds. So let's throw them down. And then what's nice about magical crops is that a little water This should grow shortly. And magical crops actually produce drops that are common items within the game. So we can use it to actually grow iron, diamonds, obsidian, ender drops. And in this case, we can produce more Manichio. So what do we do? Get a get our hoe and gather it up and that should give us that should return our seed and give us more essence. So with the Manichio seed we can use it to produce coal, water, fire, earth. So we can actually grow more earth without having to produce it uh, by composting. Um, redstone well, we have an awful lot of redstone right now. And obsidian, iron. So in order to get to these higher levels, we're going to need to be able to produce Imperio Essence, which means we'll need Crucio Essence and Axio Essence from our Manichio Essence. So this is going to be our first stab. But, all right, with that, I'm going to call it an episode. So I'm going to let this Manikyo grow and start exploring what other kinds of magical crops we can produce that make sense, given that we have so much other material sitting over there in the chest. So please leave a comment or a like. Let me know how I'm doing, and I will see you later. Bye.